everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. A quick warning for all of you guys watching, it's gonna be a shorter episode of news today. I'm working on a couple stories for tomorrow and hoping for some roster confirms or some big announcements for tomorrow's episode to be a little bit lengthier than this one. So please leave a comment down below. I got a lot of free time today. Leave a funny comment and hopefully I'll reply to as many as possible. But for the first story, I do wanna talk about Valve's response to the apparent crouch jump bug, which was heavily abused uh, for the first three days or so of the PGL Major. This is actual tweet by Kerrigan was referring to, uh, it was actually a couple days old Old, but it's referring to the PGL major where the players did beat up and apparently Valve was at that meeting. According to Kerrigan though, their first initial response to this crouch jump bug was how the players can adapt to it. Now obviously the pro players do know best and you can tell by Kerrigan's response here, he was actually kind of uh, a little bit sarcastic about that and really kind of upset about the fact that the devs are trying to make the players adapt. That was their first question, but it does seem luckily their response at uh, first of course initially a bit naive and it does seem like a reasonable response you know, to, to, to ask the pros why can't you adapt to it? It seems the bug was abused a bit too much and is a bit too powerful at this point with teams kind of trying to perfect the thing that it's a bit past the point of actually being able to adapt to it. And so apparently a dev was actually asked to fix the crouch jump bug. Who knows how long that will take? You know, we still have the Negev and the R8 are still trying to get fixes too. And that's been months so far just for two weapons. So we'll see in the future when this actually happens. And if gentlemen's agreements are still going to be a thing at future tournaments, we will watch and see. That was Val's initial response. I think a reasonable response at first, but hopefully it will be fixed sometime in the future, and we just don't know how long that's going to be. Now, bouncing off this, I want to touch on kind of a sad story, but also a very important one. Um, so first off, I do want to talk about Antonio Danilowski. If you guys don't know, I probably butchered his name there. He also went by the in-game name as Six, and he was a mouse sports player for th about three, just over three years, actually. And seven years ago, I was actually a couple days late. I'm sorry, guys. I was busy. Um, I missed the anniversary of, of his passing away. And so I want to share this story with all of you. I'm also going to link this video down below, guys a little memory video, remembrance video of him, and he was actually a CSGO pro player for Mouse Sports just a little over three years, and it was actually seven years ago, um, two days ago, it was his anniversary of his death. He was on his way home from the airport, and he passed away in a car crash, and th these kind of stories actually make me just like really overwhelmingly sad, even though I don't know the guy, and I just really felt bad for that, so Mouse Sports was tweeting out about this guy, and let's just not forget a CSGO pro player who, uh, who has passed away, so this is a kind of a, a story for him. I'll link that video down below for all of you guys. And he was only 20 years old. So just kind of an overall note to all of you guys is live life to the fullest. This guy was just... It had so much life ahead of him, so um, just in a little remembrance of him, I wanted to cover that story. And let's talk about that title, shall we? Many of you guys probably saw the Tempo Storm possibly coming back into the CSGO scene. I'll give you all of you my evidence as of right now, but as as we speak, Mo TV is live streaming. He's been tweeting out things like this. Apparently at 5K subs, leave it to Mo to have like a dollar amount, like have a, a personal benefit for this. He will be leaking all the information apparently going on with the ex I Buy Power players and himself. And I, I can't lie, this is a great tactic. It's actually probably worth it because that could involve a Tempo Storm team with these guys. That's my, at least some of, some of my actual suspicion right now is Tempo Storm returning to the scene. It might not be with them, but that actually is a current current rumor right now as well because Dazed was offered by Tempo Storm on stream a while ago. He did announce this. On top of that, we do have Tarek tweeting out things like this. I didn't really realize it until a couple days ago when one of you guys commented. Well, Tarek's little play on words here, he says the storm, the storm, Tempo Storm is near. If he, I don't know if that's actually what he meant, but kind of funny, he, he did choose those words. So Tempo Storm could have a CSGO team in the future. And if Mo, if Mo TV does actually reach 5K subs, we're going to find out what actually is going to be leaked by him. So we'll see what happens in the next few days if he does actually reach that current sub count. I don't watch his streams. I'm not sure how close he is. If you guys could comment down below if he's, if he's very close to that. Because 5K subs, that's that's a pretty uh, hefty amount of subs. So on top of that, though, I do want to talk about other rumors about all you Fnatic fans out there. It does seem very potential. We could have a phase Guardian and alongside that, even a phase Olaf Meister. This is rumored a couple days ago that Olaf Meister could be leaving uh, Fnatic for FaZe Clan and even further so they are definitely in talks as of right now as we actually had Nell, the founder uh, the founder of Flickshot, a very good website. I'll link it down below for all of you. And Nell has been a great leaker so far. He said that Fnatic definitely could actually disband, which seems so startling. I, I never understood that just one bad major, Fnatic not even having a bad major, and then alongside FaZe Clan who had one 0-3 performance and three best of ones in a major, and both these teams are seeking changes that like people... 
I, I never thought they would even need the changes. So it does seem Fnatic, Olaf, Meister, and Dennis could be leaving that roster, and then Fnatic would also disband. And this puts a whole lot of bullets in my actual former. I actually had a Swedish shuffle for all of you, and that's pretty much torn to bits now because I did not see this coming at all. So for all you Fnatic fans out there, it does seem Fnatic will also now be involved. Okay, then I'll answer a couple of community questions and we'll get this video over with. The first of which, this guy asked me, where is Pookie? If you guys know Pookie, he's actually a pretty large or was a pretty large CSGO YouTuber. I think he actually broke 100,000 subscribers. He actually uh, had his account hacked a long time ago. I'm pretty sure, I can almost assure you, that Pookie has pretty much quit YouTube or CSGO YouTube altogether. He has not uploaded very frequently and in the past few months at all, uh, any kind of frequent schedule there. So I don't really think Pookie is coming back. Talking about coming back though, another part community question. Thank you guys for submitting these down below. Someone asked me, where is Devil Walk? Now, if you guys remember, it was actually, I believe, uh, might have been last summer, Devil Walk returned for Optic Gaming, and he was only there for a couple months. Unfortunately, it seems that everyone who goes to Optic Gaming is pretty much on trial, and it pretty much turns out that none of those trials have worked out. That goes for players and coaches. Devil Walk was their coach for about two months' time. He left there for Epsilon Esports, where he actually he is st he's still listed as their coach, but I'm pretty sure he's not actively coaching Epsilon as of right now. Epsilon still has a pretty good lineup. They've announced a couple new players, but I don't think he's very active on Twitter at all, so I'm not really sure if he's still their active coach and with the, the meta not being really changed for coaching wise ever since the new coaching rule came out where coaches can only talk during timeouts I really find that coaches have been pretty ineffective unless you're one of the top five coaches in the world on those top five teams that are in the in the top 20 I think only five or six teams have really steady coaches there um, so unless you're one of those people I really find it unfortunate for people like Devil Walk and we're nearly no teams right now especially lower teams that are outside the top 10 are not really looking for coaches so that is where he is at as always hope you guys all enjoyed my name is Jake remember I like you and by the way look at these shorts I knew they were gonna come back guys I just knew I knew my boys from Tempo Storm were gonna come back and if they do I'm ready for them as always hope you guys all enjoyed I will see you all tomorrow here's a yelling outro so turn down your headsets and uh, remember I like you ah! come on